us into an exploration of prosperity consciousness, Randy Gage. That, then on the flight home from T Tahiti, Air France 747, and it just so happened I was going to the lavatory as the curtain parted and I saw this very unusual sight because you probably, uh, if you live in the south, you know about chain gangs. They have a sheriff with a shotgun and then they have the convicts, they're manacled together and they're on the road, right, uh, picking up litter or doing road work or something. So I looked and I saw a section like that. And these people, kind of, you know, strapped in. So I say to the flight attendant, uh, is this like a prison barge or something? <laughs> she says, no, that's the economy cabin. <laughs> now, I did, I mean, you probably didn't know either, did, right? Did you know there's this whole other section in the back of the plane? I didn't know, behind the curtain. These people, they're all strapped in, they throw them a bag of peanuts, and oh, she gave me the whole can of Coke. But, you know, what's up with that, right? So, now, of course, I, I knew I'd be coming here, and I knew this is a very inquisitive crowd, and you'd want to know about these things, so I did a little investigation. How does that happen? Well, it turns out you could get, uh, like, 1500 bucks. you could get two tickets in the back of the plane to Tahiti, and maybe 15000 to $18,000, you get two tickets in the front. So the difference, and, and by the way, you fly from L.A., and it's, I, if I remember, it's like nine and a half, ten-hour flight. So think about this. So it's a nine and a half, ten-hour flight. It's 1500 in the back, 15, 16, 18,000 in the front. So there's $15,000 difference between the two sections. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're saying, okay, nine and a half hours, $15,000. Why would anybody ride in the back? <laughs> Is that not what you're thinking? Because if that's not what you're thinking, then we need to explore your prosperity consciousness. So. Here's the million dollar question that begets, which is why isn't your business doing better? Now, you know I learned from NSA, research your audience, find out. So what I did leading up for the last week is I read every single one of you's websites, one sheet <laughs> and packet for every person in the room. Here's what I've discovered. We have 517 people who are the number one sales trainer in the world. <laughs> so why can't you sell more of your speeches? <laughs> we have 893 people who are the preeminent motivator in the galaxy. So why can't you motivate anybody to buy you? <laughs> and we have about uh, 312 people who claim they can actually move mountains with a mustard seed. So why can't you get a bureau to return your calls? Now, let's explore why you think that's the case, and then let me suggest why I think that's the case. What you think is because that brilliant marketing intern you hired from high school for $7 an hour <laughs> isn't able to convey your greatness to the meeting planners. Okay? You believe it's because those ignorant bureaus don't understand how amazing you are. You believe it's because of those evil, mean, nasty screeners who are keeping your book away from Oprah. <laughs> Let me tell you what I think. I believe you're not manifesting more prosperity because you are self-sabotaging yourself. And I don't know, because I did it for 30 years of my life. 
okay? And I believe you self-sabotage yourself because of limiting beliefs that you have. And see, what's happening with the government, what's happening with the organized religion, what's happening with the data sphere, is they're programming you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you know what they're programming with you? 95, 96, 98 percent of the time, it's negative, lack-centered programming. Money is bad, rich people are evil, it's spiritual to be poor, it's noble to be poor. So we create this clash. We get out there on this conscious level. We go into business to say, I want to be successful. I want to make millions of dollars. I want to have a coaching program. I want to have a best-selling book. I want to sell my stuff and have my internet sites all around the world. I want to touch life, reach millions of people beyond the main platform. And then you have the subconscious mind saying, if you keep doing that, you're going to become one of those evil, mean, nasty, rich people. So you better sabotage yourself right now so your family still likes you, so you still fit in with your friends, so you, you're okay in society, so people don't get jealous. Yeah. So I went out, and for the first years, you know, I taught how to make money, and I was pretty good at making money. So I was okay. I was congruent to do those programs, but I didn't really know prosperity. It took me a long time. It took me about seven years of personal uh, therapy to get to the point where I could like myself. It took me about seven years of therapy to get to the point where I could be in relationship with people. And it took me losing everything and then finding my spiritual sustenance to, to then be able to really understand what true prosperity and abundance is about. See, we got all kind of people in NSA. Well, I watched The Secret 11 times. Why am I not more successful? <laughs> Let's be real, kids. Sitting home watching The Secret 11 times is not going to make you successful. <sighs> if you want to really know how to be successful, you're going to have to get my next book, The Secret of chicken soup for Harry Potter's soul. <laughs> now, if we want to be successful there, I believe there's seven spiritual laws we have to live by, and you have to live by all of them to, be, to manifest true prosperity in your life. And I think that's the most important work I do, and that's why I do the work I do. But here's what I know. Wherever you are in your business right now is the result of your vision. Now, a lot of you want to argue with that with me. You don't believe. You say, no, you don't understand. My vision is to be so sick. No, that's not your vision. That's what you think your vision is. Your real vision is exactly where you are right now because you have manifested exactly with the thoughts you give precedence to. So what happens is you change your programming. You change your core foundational beliefs. See, if you change your core foundational beliefs then you change your vision. And if you change your vision, you will change your reality. Because that's what we know about the subconscious mind. Whatever it's programmed to do, it does. It doesn't analyze, it doesn't criticize, it doesn't evaluate. We know our subconscious, you all know this, half of the room teaches this, okay? It's time we all live it though, okay? Because we know our subconscious mind does exactly what it's programmed to do. So we have to be the people in charge of programming our subconscious mind. You can't let Hollywood do it. You can't let the government do it. And you can't let organized religion do it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Randy Gage.